consumer profile of a adult daycare facility? Well, so I'll, I'll just look at the demographics, the age, the household the income, and how many person per household currently. Um, that's pretty much it. All right. How do you train this? You said 55 and older. It's an adult daycare. It's not necessarily... Okay, people think of a daycare for an adult like... Um, Place just for old people. <laughs> like activities. I would make it like an activity center, fun. something <laughs> fun. You know, you don't have to necessarily be, you know, old and handicapped. You can actually go to have fun, learn new things, activity centers, art, field trips. Um, okay. Newly divorcees, for example, people are they don't have a place to go. <laughs> I feel at a Do you, you think you want to look for retail outlets and retail centers in that you could combine location, like synergies of location? And I'm not laughing about this, but there's um, larger shopping centers in Europe, particularly that one in Hamburg, did actually not just the kids care, like it's like IKEA, you drop off your kid and you go for three or four hours shopping. They did that for husbands. Like you drop off your husband, he gets a beer, food, reading materials, <laughs> entertainment, whatever, and you, and you come back and take him and do Yeah? This is very bizarre. This is, this is very, yeah, it's literally like, almost like you drop him off in a gentleman's car. It's an old story. I don't know if that means broke. But um, as you might know from friends or your own experience, if you go shopping with your male partner or spouse, after the third shop, we have certain facial expressions of pain in the enjoyment. So um, for your storyline, funny, funny idea. It's really cool. Yeah? You gotta have some humor in here too. But for your storyline, what you might want to add to that is, like what are combinations and synergies you can tap on? Does this make sense to be next to, let's say, a movie theater? Maybe Absolutely. not, but retail. Dog park. Yeah, or acti other activities. I have an idea. Any ideas? There, is, um, there are gyms that offer, I think it's called silver sneakers or something, like gyms for like older people. So you can digitize them. Or Absolutely. geo code, whatever it's called. So like anything that that attracts or that services that you know community. Um, you have to base it on age. You have to but there's different services, uh, you know, for those types. Mm -hmm. I would. I don't think 55 is that old. It's not. Well, I'm trying to make it. It's 65. I don't want to cater to. I'm just going to say 63 looks better than me. Everyone can still get 65 in their app. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, yeah, I think 55 is 75 is the age I'm going for. 55, like, you like, you use 55 as well. Oh, there you go. I know you're young. <laughs> Not bad. So, <laughs> if you go, if you do this, you need to present for sure an age profile on that target area in those, in, in that discipline, uh, in those buffer zones. Yeah? We do know from work in this class that we have in that area fairly high disposable income. Yeah? So you gotta have at least make a judgment call between the age profile and the disposable income. Maybe you wanna take a look actually into what type of purchases and activities are actually done in that area. Yeah? Gonna be busy, but it looks, it looks interesting. A little synergy. I was thinking about your sports authority and your wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that'd be a perfect show. Oh, the location. The one that Water Hill location. I also might want to consider a change of that name, adult daycare facility. Any ideas? No, but <laughs> think about it. <laughs> Yeah, don't take care.
Miami. Miami has a lot of care for those places. I don't know. I don't know. It's all daycare. Literally, you drop them off and you pick them up later. You name it whatever you want. Well, but you were Googling it and you found the job. Like, through those calls, the ones on the map. Yeah, I would I would go and pick. Look! Look! What's the What's the official name for these? It's um, like we know assisted assisted living is a specific type of living for the older community, uh, older population. Daycare is usually like okay, pre kindergarten or kindergarten, just about kindergarten age. Then you have preschool, kindergarten, and higher. Yeah. Okay. So maybe there is already a specific literature or a term out for that. I think if not, think don't spend too much time on this. I would rather have you spend more time on GX. But I think the county would tell you. If you ask somebody in the county, don't tell them what they're called. They have to see also have an issue with that. Just be as broad as you can. You find your description and then pop up like a keyboard that goes for that. So if you're an adult, It'll pop everything that's on the door. It'll be a whole lot. Uh, if I hear retirement homes and then these guys popped up. Yeah, but then a whole bunch of other ones came out. Yeah, I don't know if I'm playing with this. I don't think I'm playing with this. So you search the whole thing there. Yeah. Yeah. So there are the things actually. If you search it that way, it'll actually be the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I just have to show you. I'll show you the report. Yeah, it's, it's a fine line to adult entertainment, which is yeah, yes, different. Yes, yes. Yeah. So a lot of people so so That is different. It's a form of adult entertainment. <laughs> All right. Good. Very good. Proud of us? I'm extremely proud of us. If I would have told you what you guys are showing today, Six, eight weeks ago, when you just never ever had this stuff installed on a machine, and do I need to double click this or only one click here? Uh, you guys realize what you have done in six to eight weeks, what kind of learning curve you guys went up. Yeah? So, lessons learned from this session, uh, or actually from this class. Um, If you step out into the world and in your future careers, be careful how to handle frustrations. Frustrations will come and you will overcome them. Yeah? Be careful with that. Um, a person who says, okay, I'm running here with 200, 120 miles per hour against a concrete wall right now with that type of tool. The person who stands up and says, okay, what else can I do with this? Am I doing something wrong? Yes, how can I fix this? That person will find the additional function and the other function, the other solution. That's somewhat what we have seen today. Um, there have been a few that really went up and climbed Mount Everest, even before we just said, hey, come on, we just need some sand dunes here. You know? um, so I'm a little bit more in how to say that. Uh, be noisy and try to explore. Don't accept the given thing. Um, the given thing as, and this is my looking, reflecting this in an honest, honest, more colleague rather than your teacher. I had, I think, students in this class going a little bit nuts because an, assign an assignment did not go with A, B, C, D, E, F order like we did in class in the videos then. We jumped, we did A, B, E, F. Yeah, remember? There was no X, Y advanced table. We went straight from Boom, from setting it up into geocoding. Remember that once frustration and how did you overcome that next time when something is not in the same order. I kept saying from the beginning, this GS stuff is like a big toolbox, like you go into the garage and have all these screwdrivers. You learn not just one screwdriver, you learn five or six different, or let's get to deal with aggression here, Hammers, you had different hammers or axes. Yeah? 
remembering in which situation that little hammer, half pounder versus the big five pounder is important. That is in, in the experience you need to earn. And you did that already here. Yeah? I'm actually glad that we kept running the tape for the students' presentations because I urge you to go back and compare your mock projects. They're all awesome. But they're slightly different here and there. But they're not slightly different here and there because you pick different storylines. Because here and there you explore that one point a little bit more. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And you saw this in this group with, exp with different expertise. Someone was like, wow! If I would have known that earlier, mm -hmm. yeah, I was one mouse click or two mouse clicks away from you. Yeah. I can't show you all the mouse clicks here. But I tried to show you a lot. And we did have uh, pickups at the beginning, technology, and then we had a storm. Um, I, 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 I took, um, did take notes, so I really want to show you a few things that sh came up here tonight. I'll do like five minutes, ten minute video and provide data anywhere from the world if needed. Yeah? Because right. good data sometimes takes time to set up. Uh, part of tonight's session was the idea of, let's say, show you 3D extrusion, how to do simple 3D blocks and rotate them. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a little aha effect. Um, I will do that in the video for you. First of all, I realized I didn't put it on this machine, but it's fine. But I think the learning experience is better when we burn out a little bit tonight. Everyone's like, oh, I want to go home. She wants to party. <laughs> this is the last five minutes of her graduate degree. So, um, GIS is a beast. It's a really a great tool, but it's the biggest pain of software you can see. The online world, everyone is here like, yeah, online, I really like it. I will still teach the next class with desktop because every one of you played with desktop to set it up to step up into the online world. And then maybe got stuck in online, but not everything is there yet. If you go really specific data, it's not there yet. I doubt that you will find all the building permits provided as a data layer. But you will find it as a download and then you data mine and refine. Data mine and refine is the next big step to do more in-depth GIS. Yeah? Then you end up with those tables and the table right. join and um, spatial joins. These topics are also covered in your textbook with data provided step by step. So don't stop learning the software. Yeah? 180 days is your license. From the book or from the school? From the book. I have students here. Everyone gets a few more credits after the class so you can keep going online and exploring. Yeah? Um, the idea was, well, we do eight week sessions to the end of the semester. I give you that. Yeah? And I put you on a budget. Everyone was on a budget and I pumped that up again. Yeah? So if you happen to blow up your budget, we had a fun story yesterday. He did 90,000 geocodes. What? So yeah, but he, it's learning. Come on, learn it. Kind of. <laughs> so you throw, throw, throw in some more online credits and get things done. How many credits was it? Uh, I think you geocoded a total of 300 or 350 credits, full credits. So if you think about a small report, it's like one credit. He did a good job. He did massive work. But you, you, you saw his results. The, the data he was working on was not just the list of 100 addresses. What was his total address? 16,000 something? Uh, well, that's, what, that's when it got whittled down, but it started off with like 150. Yeah. So there are different calibers. I, I did a few weeks ago, I uh, uh, told you guys, I did uh, um, tax permits for alcoholic beverages in the state of Texas, 202,000 geocodes for a research project. Yeah? So there, you can scale those up, you can go nut the listing. Again, do not stop learning this tool, the science. I would, in the planning discipline, I honestly would never hire anyone who has not done GIS class. In the real estate development world, 
it's coming, it's there. It's the largest growing sector in ESRI by industry. It's the largest growing industry in terms of licensing and data requests. Yeah? So don't shy away from this. Um, again, uh, we had a board meeting about oh, two, three, two weeks ago. Gave a three, five slides presentation about what we're doing with these class, GS class and with the next board. And literally, I had board members talking to me, oh, we're doing this in GS, we're doing that in GS. I'm not so sure, but I think we have a subscription. That means it's online. And I had one actually coming in and said, hey, I'm looking for a GS intern. Talk to me. So there is demand there. It's another sales pitch that makes you very hot in the market for future employers. Yeah? So again, don't shy away because we stumble across problems of downloading data, data mining, or you're overwhelmed with the trees in the forest. Put it on a piece of paper, sketch, write down what you really want to do. Like a research question, I want to do X, Y. And then look at this and say, with the tools I've learned, how can I overcome this? How can I solve this? You know? Again, cooking joke, cooking it. If you want to do something with eggs, it's not the right way sometimes to do it. Population. I want to do something with population. Now, you have to ask yourself, what do I need to do to make a really master chef style omelet? Well, you need eggs, but there's a different way to do that. You need to learn how to crack them, how to rip them. And etc. Uh, the crazy ones actually whip the egg with the egg white separately. Makes a different foamy, fluffy thing. Mm -hmm. The Americans don't like the fluffy thing. So, okay. That said, I had fun. Do not shy away from emails. I will answer them. I might not answer them immediately because deadlines are not there. You know? I truly enjoyed this class, believe it or not. I truly enjoy random people stopping by during any day and knocking the door. I think we even had folks on the weekends, yeah, when I was in the office. Don't shy away from learning. Yeah? Good. Thank you very much. It was a fun class. Sunday night, 8 p.m. sharp. Yes. Deadline. We do it all in the file and upload. Sunday night. Did you read my emails? Yes. <laughs> I thought it was Saturday noon. No. No. Oh, we changed that. Alright, I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So take oh, that's right. <laughs> take the comments you heard, the questions you heard today. Aye. Look at your write-up. Change the symbology of a map. Maybe you add the map because hey, I missed an overview. Where is this area? Yeah. Folks who did interactive online, great job, buddy. Now you have to think about how you tell your story in a static environment. Screenshot it, give an overview, write up. Don't think again, don't think that you need population data as a big map. If it's in 10 miles and 5 miles, the important information is what is your population in the area covered by 5 miles? Yeah. What's the population in a specific age group within five miles for yours? Yeah? So think what you ask and then make that judgment call on that tool. Yeah? I'm available via email if a bit Bridges starts to burn, but I think you're all on the right way. Bridges, not Bridget. <laughs> Like this, bridges. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Some of you, I still have my online class, and some of you I see in land use. Read the chapters. Read the chapters. I am not going to repeat what's in the chapter. I'm going to ask questions between the lines. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.